capacity and uh, pipelines in Saldana Bay in the Western Cape uh, province. Uh, and at this time, I also like to welcome a uh, all the members of the public that have joined us uh, via our different uh, live streaming platforms. Um, we're proceeding then with the meeting. Uh, we are now on item five, which is the Strategic Fuel Fund Association application for the Second Amendment of the Conditions of its Combined License issued for the operation of a crude oil storage facility, a loading facility and pipelines in Saldana Bay in the Western Cape province. Over to you, Madam Tua, and your team. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I would like to just um, uh, remind members that uh, this is one of those uh, combined licenses that um, we had um, uh, had an approval for PPS on the 7th of April 2021 to uh, have a look at those and make sure that they are well structured to allow the uh, application of a tariff. Um, uh, Mr. Lukele will take us through in terms of the um, main features that will uh, allow the members to, 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 to do the, the, the recommendation. And But I also need to highlight that uh, in the past 10 years, we've been struggling with getting an adequate tariff application from uh, SFF. But um, following this um, application, we have an, an adequate uh, tariff to, to, that will allow us to move forward with the processing of the tariff application. But for now, we're looking at this um, uh, 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 amendment of the combined license. Mr. Lukele, please uh, take us through. Uh, th thank, thank you, Chairperson, and, and good morning to everyone. Um, the amendment sought by uh, SFF, um, as indicated, is the redefining of the description of the two pipelines in the in the license conditions. This is to be auxiliary to the loading facility, instead of being a standalone pipelines, as currently is the case. <clears throat> and as indicated, Chair, this follows from the PPS approval of the proposed remedies that were outlined in the combined licenses report and uh, sff was one of the licenses identified for for this uh, for, for their facilities in saldana bay the approved remedy by the pps was that uh, the license conditions of sff be amended uh, to make the pipelines auxiliary to the loading facility and chair this is what ssf applied for after being advised uh, by narsa to do so and chair it's also important maybe to indicate that uh, the suggested amendment is in line with the petroleum pipelines act in that uh, the act uh, or the petroleum pipelines act defines a, a loading facility to mean any marine uh, facility uh, that is or can be used to load or offload petroleum and include any auxiliary uh, pipelines connected there to, and of course, uh, excluding bunker and facilities. And, and the, the pipelines in question here, uh, Chair, are connected to that, uh, to the SSF marine loading facilities and are considered auxiliary pipelines to the loading facility. And this effectively is the, is the amendment um, uh, requested by uh, the LSNC SSF. Uh, with that, Chairperson, the recommendation is for the PPS to recommend to the energy regulator to, uh, uh, to approve uh, the recommendations which are detailed in paragraph 24 of the submission. The first one is the approval of the amendment by recategorizing and rephrasing the description of the two pipelines in the license conditions to be auxiliary to, to the loading facility. Uh, the second recommendation is for the approval of the decision and reasons for decision document. And the last uh, recommendation is the approval of the addendum to, to the license conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lukele, Madam Tua. Um, members, I also just want to, to, to make you aware of the fact that uh, the, 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 these uh, uh, the facilities uh, being a kind of an uh, anomaly um, in, in, when one looks at the various facilities in the country. That message has been relayed to the uh, Department of Mere Resources and Energy. And all that is important is then to, to be able to uh, uh, amend legislation uh, to factor that in so that they can be treated as such. Um, 
noting the challenges that also have had in terms of the the, the tariff uh, application from their side. But um, uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of dispensation uh, will will actually work for 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 these uh, pipelines as for for these facilities as as we engage with the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy. Having said that, um, um, members, uh, I would like to hear if there are any comments, questions, uh, guidance from your side, um, noting that this is actually more of an implementation of the decision that we, the, this committee took in dealing with the, the combined licenses such that they are appropriately disaggregated. Thank you. Over to you members, if there are any questions by show of hands. I take it, oh, um, all right then. Uh, Advocates Tolle, then uh, uh, Madam Masetti, welcome to the meeting. I've already notified the meeting of the challenges that you had in terms of being able to log in. Um, Advocates Tolle, over to you, Madam. Um, thank you, Chairperson, and <clears throat> thanks to Ms. Mutua and Mr. Lupena for the presentation. Chair, I don't know in the introductory note uh, opening that Ms. Mutua made, he mentioned the issue about the long outstanding tariff application, and it wasn't clear to me whether she said NASA has received it or not. Um, and because this is an application that has been outstanding for many years. And if we have not received it, I just want to find out what is the impact thereof to this particular um, application for um, an amendment to its um, a, a operation operation license chairperson. I just want to get that clarity. I may have missed it in the submission and as well as, as in the presentation that has been made. Thank you, chairperson. Thank you, uh, Advocate Tolle. Um, thank you very much. Over to you, Madam Masetti. Chairperson, oh, um, there's a delay from my side, if you can just bear with me. Um, Chair, um, my question actually relates to the implication of um, the decision that is sought, um, the one of uh, the recategorization uh, and rephrasing. Just the significance of that decision in terms of, um, in terms of the requirements of the Act, um, uh, one of them being the, the third party access, maybe in that area uh, of Saldana Bay, if there are other parties that um, uh, are, are wish to um, connect to those pipelines that we are um, going, we are asked to recategorize them ex as auxiliary pipelines. If that recategorization is so significant that we saw or we deemed it appropriate that they must um, make some changes or amendment in the license so that uh, they be now regarded as auxiliary pipeline. If that is significant, can we also look into what that does it mean um, uh, uh, for that recategorization uh, when it comes to uh, other requirements of the Act? One of them being the third party access. Um, I will mention that for uh, for now, and uh, I want I wanted to also check whether um, there was any um, tariff for these specific pipelines or um, the need to determine a tariff for these for these pipelines will then not be necessary any anymore because of the recategorization. So there are those two specific legal requirements that I would like to be clarified on and also other implications. I'm just picking up as I'm trying to, you know, understand uh, practically uh, what could then happen uh, with those with those uh, legal requirements. But I'm, uh, I, I would like to also hear the team if there are any other implications of which implications uh, perhaps necessitated um, NERSA to then allow or to request this uh, party or um, company SSF, SFF to um, to recategorize or to apply for an amendment of license, if that can be um, can be clarified, uh, Chairperson, that, that that is the that is the that those are the only two questions really that 
I wanted to understand as a result of the decision that is sought. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, members. Um, Madam Tua and your team, if you may please just respond. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, in terms of the question on the tariff, um, we have received a tariff uh, application before, but due to the way the license was structured, it made it very difficult for NASA to process. Uh, as we know, we have a different uh, methodology for the pipelines and the one for loading and storage. So with, with the current uh, uh, recategorization, we have uh, received an adequate tariff uh, application which we will be able to um, process. So we have received an application. Maybe uh, Ms. Bowe can also further assist in terms of uh, Ms. Masetti's question uh, regarding the the the, the tariff on, uh, on on pipelines, and also maybe uh, also Mr. Undit in terms of um, the other question on uh, the third party access and the impact uh, of the changing of the auxiliary pipelines. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Madam Boko. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Ms. Um, so, so, Chair, uh, with the old license or with the way that the, the license was structured, um, SFF had to apply for three tariffs, uh, which is a as, as load, loading facility tariff, pipeline tariff, and a storage tariff. But then the tariff application that we have now received, which has already been declared adequate, and a decision on uh, confidentiality has already been taken. It just needs to be communicated to the licensee. So with this application, um, it, it, it's aligned to this amendment application, wherein um, only two tariffs are applied for, being a, a loading facility tariff and a storage tariff, a facility tariff. So the pipeline is now auxiliary to the loading facility. So those assets will be considered as part of the loading facility tariffs. Thank you, Chairperson. I hope that clarifies the matter. Thank you, Mr. Untit and Mr. Lukele. Thank you, um, Chair, and good morning, um, members and colleagues. Um, indeed, um, the situation has been, to answer Ms. Massetti's question, um, indeed, there's been new developments since this facility was built many years ago, and and that is the oil tanking MOX matter, which which uh, the members recently considered in terms of that. So to get access to the OTMS facilities, you have to use the um, the marine loading, offloading, the transfer using these uh, pipelines to an interconnection point and from that interconnection point you'll go into OTMS. Members will also recall a recent uh, matter for uh, that pipeline that will interconnect with Astron to pump um, or to transfer product to, to the refinery. So in short to answer your question, in addition to all the factors that, that you mentioned. Obviously, tariff compliance, Ms. Boku indicated, was a problem. Um, that third-party access and the fact that there's now need for other users of that pipeline, which was traditionally just SFF, um, has, has definitely uh, another important consideration of, of it. Uh, as we know, so I think that I hope I've answered your question. Definitely third party access and other users is, is a key consideration. Not sure if Mr. Lukele wants to add, Chair. So in short, are you saying that this arrangement will not negatively impact uh, access, but is going to enhance that? Just in short. In fact, yes, sir. It, it will enhance it. It will definitely enhance it because now they will do a tariff only for offloading, and they will be um, otherwise there had to be those three or those two tariffs plus the tariff for OTMS if you wanted to use that facility. So yes, it will enhance it. Okay. Uh, before maybe Mr. Lukela comes in, Madam Masset, I see your hand is up. If you may just chip in, please. Yes, Chairperson. Um, 
uh, chairperson, I hear uh, uh, Mr. Your sorry, um, uh, Noblungi Saboko says um, the, the, there will only be two tariffs now, which is the tariff for storage as well as the tariff for loading facilities. So we'll be approached for the approval of those and therefore will not set tariffs for the pipeline. So I wanted to just check on the on the on the on that implication then. So uh, does it mean that uh, even with the strategic positioning of SFF in that area of the of 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 of, of the market, um, there will be no direct interconnection or third party access uh, on the on the uh, to, uh, on the pipelines themselves. They, they, they will not um, directly interconnect through the pipelines, or if not interconnection, a third party access on the pipelines directly. So it will be done through loading facilities and therefore pipelines will be taken as if they are playing a sort of a, a supporting role as opposed to uh, them sort of uh, being standalone uh, prov uh, in terms of transporting the product that will be stored in the storage facilities and transporting it uh, through the loading facilities. So on the pipeline, we don't expect third party access or interconnection. I just wanted to get that. And with that question then, um, what happens to the cost of the pipeline? Uh, is the cost of the pipeline added onto the loading facilities since they are probably just connected to them or the product going through um, or uh, uh, being transported through the loading facilities and then to storage. So it will only be storage cost that third parties will pay, but the cost associated with that infrastructure, the pipeline infrastructure will then be included in the loading facilities if there is third party access. Is that what it means? I just want to check that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Untit, if you can just talk to that qu quickly. Yeah, Mr. Lukele will, will, will address that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, th thank you. Thank you, Chair. And uh, maybe where we should start is to say, in terms of the Act now, which is the condition of SFF uh, license, I think it's section 20, subsection 1J, Interconnection, it is not necessarily just limited to pipelines, but to, to facilities that are licensed by NERSA. And one example uh, that, that will be familiar is that of uh, interconnection that happened between the Sunrise Loading Facility as well as the pipeline. So interconnection is to facilities and is not just maybe limited to, 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 to pipelines per se. And in terms of the second question, the, maybe how maybe we should answer it is that there is no physical changes to the facilities. What will be happening by this amendment is just to make this pipeline to be auxiliary to the loading. And that will mean the pipeline cost will just will, will be part of, will be added to the loading facility. And the tariff that will be uh, approved for that uh, loading will of course include the, uh, the, 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 uh, that auxiliary uh, pipeline. And they, it means therefore there will be two tariffs for the loading facility and for the storage facility. And currently, as it's set up at, 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 in that area, the users of the storage facility of OTMS, the only way the product can get in there is via the SSF facilities. So nothing will change in, in, in that front. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think the, the long and the short of it, uh, 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 Mr. Lukele, is the question is the 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 interconnection cannot be done in the middle of the pipeline or right at the loading facility itself, um, uh, such that the 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 this uh, um, third party that is connecting will be built for infrastructure, which is the pipeline that they are not necessarily using. So you are saying that 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 will not happen. In other words, they can only it can only be able they can only be able to join uh, after the, the the pipeline, such that the pipeline actually together with 
the loading facilities are deemed to be one. Um, in other words, they are just auxiliary to that. That is, I think, that is the question. So can you can can you just talk to that? Oh, thank you, Chair. Currently, how it is, is that's the case because there are only two facilities. Is that one that is shown maybe in the picture by OTMS and um, and um, SFF. So the, the interconnection by 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 OTMS is it's 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 close to the um, SSF facility. So it's not in the loading facility site. So it's to the pipeline itself. So even if, and depending on, uh, because you can't uh, preclude, maybe there will be a crude facility somewhere close to the uh, marine loading facility. But in terms of the special uh, things there, I think that will be highly likely, and maybe Mr. Ndid can, can add further. But currently, as is, the only interconnected party is OTMS, and they are close to um, uh, SFF storage facility. So interconnections to the pipeline uh, further inland, if I may put it that way. Thanks. Okay, so the interconnection can only be done downstream the pipeline as things stand because the pipeline is uh, in integral to the operation of the loading facility. That is the 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 the, the answer, Madam Masetti. Um, if you are you are just an indication, if you are you are answered now, Madam Masetti, and uh, Advocate Tolle, if the answer, Chairperson, maybe. Uh... I don't know, Mr. Boko, you're sorry, Ms. Boko, the, with regards to the the cost of the pipeline, whether it is going to be included. Can we assume that it will therefore be included uh, in the in the loading facilities? I don't know if then the pipeline is now auxiliary and it's not a standalone. So I just wanted to check that in terms of the tariffs. Thanks. Thank you. I've noted you, advocates, told that you are saying you are happy with the responses that you have, you have had. Um, can you just confirm, uh, Madam Bogo, that uh, the 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 asset base that is associated with the with the pipeline as being auxiliary to the loading facility will go together uh, with the facility and and be seen as one um, requisite asset base, Madam Bogo. Thank you, Chair. That, yes, that is correct, Ms. Masid. So the asset the asset base for pipelines will now form part of the storage facility uh, regulatory asset base because it is now auxiliary to the to the to the loading facility. So it's it, it forms part of the rep for loading facility. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Madam Asseti. She has indicated that she's happy with the responses. Then this takes us then to the uh, recommendation, which is uh, on page seven of seven, um, uh, seven of fifteen, the green seven of fifteen, uh, paragraph twenty-four, uh, which states that um, it is recommended that the PPS considers and recommends to the energy uh, regulator to approve. The second amendment of the conditions of the combined license issued to SSF to SFF for the operation of a crude oil storage facility, a loading facility, and pipelines in Sardana Bay by rephrasing the description of the two pipelines in the license condition to be auxiliary to the loading facility. B. The decision and reasons for decision document attached here to as annexure A. And lastly, C the addendum to the license conditions attached as annexure one to the decision and reasons for decision document mentioned above. Uh, by show of hands, if you support this recommendation, uh, members. Thank you, Madam Masetti, Mr. Kumeda, thank you. Thank you, Advocates Tolle. I also do support. Uh, this then concludes item five. We go to item 11 of the original um, or the draft agenda, which is um, been uh, uh, moved up. Um, the item 11, uh, it deals with the decision and reasons for decision on the multi-year tariff application by Kemo Leo P2I LTD for its petroleum storage facility and a loading facility in Island View, Deben, Guazulu, Natal province for the period 1 Jan January 2022 to 31 December 2024. Um, over to you, um, Madam Twa. I'm not so sure, Mr. Kumeda, if there's a lingering hand or it's. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumete. Uh, Madam Tua, over to you and the team. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, may I request that Ms. Sibage assist in terms of introducing this uh, uh, submission, highlighting the features where we've um, in, uh, in, uh, applied the, the new tariff methodology. Thank you. Over to you, Ms. Sibage. Uh, thank you and good morning, members and colleagues. Uh, this is a tariff application by uh, Camelio for the petroleum storage facility and loading facility in Island View for the period 1 January 2022 to 31 December 2024. Camelio applied for multi year tariffs of three years, from, uh, as I've indicated, from 1 January 2022 to 31 December. And this is the first set of application to be considered by the PPS after its approval, approval of the operational license, which it was issued in February 2021. And the key issues uh, for consideration is the uh, uh, consideration of the multi year tariff application. As indicated that Camillo has applied for three years tariffs, the issue here is that this facility is still new and they have lower throughput volumes, which makes their tariffs to be high. However, uh, Camillo used the operational capacity to determine the tariffs instead of the throughput volumes to, re to reduce their, their tariffs. And the reason provided by Camelio for using the operational capacity in the determination of tariffs is that the use of throughput volumes based tariffs results in higher tariffs, thereby causing the storage business to be uncompetitive to allow third party access. And Camelio has indicated that it has uncommitted capacity and it intends to attract third parties to use its facility. And this is expected to improve Camelio's volumes through the third parties. So the team considered that approving multi-year tariffs for a period of three years may not be a prudent approach as the facility is fairly new and it may improve its operation in the, new, in the near future. Whereas approving uh, tariffs for only one financial year may be more prudent approach. However, it was considered that this approach may prejudice uh, Camillo as it will have to apply for a tariff for the 2023 financial year even if its efforts of getting third parties to use its facility do not succeed. We then came to a conclusion to recommend that the multi-year tariffs be considered and Camillo be directed to submit a new tariff application should its throughput volumes improve. And our analysis outcome for allowable revenue calculation and also volume analysis are shown from uh, page 7 to page 13. And just to summarize, the allowable revenue that NASA calculated differs from the one calculated by Camillo due to the different economic data applied. Reason be that uh, Camillo has used the data that was available at the time of lodgement of the tariff application, while NASA used the latest data that has been published during the analysis of the tariff application. And with regard to the volume analysis, NASA has included the new principle of provision for efficiency adjustment factor through volume rules, which is in line with the object of the act, which provides for the promotion of competition and efficiency by the energy regulator. And in order to adjust for efficiency, NASA computes the output efficiency for comparable facilities. And when comparing the Camellio with its peers in terms of category classification, Camellio storage facility appears to be inefficiently utilized. And in determining the efficiency adjustment factor through volume, NASA computed the volume target for Camellio, and therefore the Camellio needs to achieve additional throughput volumes indicated on paragraph uh, 38 in order for it to reach a relatively efficiency level. And again, in order for the Camillo to qualify for revenue clawback, it will need to achieve a target volume set by NASA, as shown on paragraph 38. So NASA will continuously monitor this against the volumes submitted to NASA on a monthly volumes. In conclusion, I would like to recommend that the PPS approves the multi-year tariffs apply for by Camillo for the uh, storage and loading facility and also approves the decision and reason for decision document attached here to S Annex A. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Sibage. I would also like to draw the attention to paragraph seven to, 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 to members that uh, this uh, storage facility, it's uh, mainly for, for it, it, it receives base oils products and, and it's also used to receive various high flesh product point products and vegetable oils by ship into the storage facility. The products in the storage uh, tanks are then dispatched by road to its uh, sister company, which is industrial ole oleochemicals products um, that manufacturing facility, which is located uh, in Jacobs industrial area in Deben. Uh, any comments, questions, uh, guidance members? I take that there are none. And then in the absence of... Oh, okay. Madam Asseti. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm sorry, my, the, the, I think the hands are very, uh, a bit slow, Chairperson. Um, uh, Chairperson, I think uh, it appears this is a, this is a new entrant. And um, my, 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 my first question is on the, on the duration of, uh, of, the, of the tariffs, tariffs that are applied for. Um, I hear the reason that is uh, advanced here uh, uh, regarding the inconvenience and all of that since this applicant um, requ uh, requested NERSA to approve for a period longer than one year. Uh, my question is whether we have um, at least reasonable economic data and, um, and such economic data which will uh, enable us to uh, make um, at least for this approval to be able to uh, uh, sort of uh, approve adjustment factors for the tariffs for the subsequent years. I think that's what I think will be much more um, basic and 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 reasonable for us to then say we approve for three years or we approve for one year. If the economic data is not reliable and is not sufficient for purposes of allowing a period of longer than one year, that's where I will then say that maybe we need to reconsider um, um, uh, this a request of three years and perhaps allow for one year. And we have done that before, even in this subcommittee for the other licensees where we did not have um, a sufficient uh, data to be certain about the, the projections and the tariffs that we would like the licensee to, uh, to charge uh, for the other years. So maybe we, if I can be clarified, if we have or we don't have um, a, a sufficient data for purpose of adjustments, then if we proceed with uh, the three years, um, depending on the answer that we'll receive, um, I, we will then have to perhaps uh, require the licensee to uh, provide a NERSA on an annual basis with the actual volumes um, uh, achieved um, and, and also the tariffs that they, they have achieved in relation to those volumes. That will then uh, enable NERSA to uh, uh, monitor the tariff adjustments based on actual data and for purposes of clawback. And, and and perhaps also the um, um, it, it, and also that will be based on the audits, the annual audits uh, and 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 financial reports, regulatory financial reports that are submitted, which will then assist in that regard. Um, again, uh, Chairperson, um, I um, uh, sorry, sorry, Chair. I'm trying to check my questions here. And um, Chairperson, since this um, is, uh, we were licensed last year, uh, both the storage facilities as well as the loading facilities, I expected to see tariffs, uh, um, uh, uh, tariff applications for both the storage as well as the loading facilities. Can I be clarified? Um, here, whether these are now combined into one, or um, or again, it is the same it's situation. It's, it is breaking. I don't know whether it's on my side or not. I just, just, just check because I was still hearing her clearly. Uh, 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 but thanks for the feedback, advocates too. 
Okay, so Chairperson, my, my last question was about um, the tariffs here that we're looking at. I um, Because we licensed uh, this, uh, uh, li uh, this, this company, uh, we licensed the storage facilities as well as the loading facilities. So I wanted to just understand whether the tariffs now are tariffs that are combined for both and what will be the reason for that. Uh, if I can be clarified, if it's the similar situation as the as the previous one, and 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 maybe uh, the response to that must also touch on the issues of the uh, of the of the just on the on the requirements, the legal requirements for third party access. If that can be clarified, Chairperson, because we only have one tariff that is here. It seems it's for loading facilities and the storage facility. If that can be clarified. On a lighter note, Chairperson. Um, can KwaZulu Natal be um, be spelled correctly? They always get it wrong. It's either they put the um, the what is it um, the dash between Kwa and Zulu, and now Zulu has been uh, sort of minimized, and the Z is supposed to always be in capital letters. Uh, it, it doesn't look good when Zulu is put in a small letter. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Madam. Uh, let's get to you. Thank you very much. Let's get to you, Mr. Kumete. Um, thank you, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Um, I've got uh, three questions, um, but maybe two questions, and then uh, I just a comment. Start with a comment. I think for me, I'd like to say we should um, um, thank applaud the, the applicant for using a capacity operational capacity um, um, to uh, in terms of their tariff settings I would however just like to know that in, in that in the, when when you look at operational capacity for for storage to be useful to see how does that talk to um, the the actual turnover um, the volume turnover what number did they use what uh, what were they expecting in terms of the of the tank um is it used just to store uh, but since that is linked to a loading facility then it there must be a kind of um, stock term that they were expecting so it would be useful if we can get an indication on that but i think from where i'm sitting um use of operational capacity is uh, brings um, stability and predictability in terms of the tariff, both for the uh, potential users of the facilities as well as for the owner of the facility itself. And from where I'm sitting, I think they should be applauded. So that's the first uh, small comment, but maybe just clarity thought in terms of the stock term that is envisaged in in respect of the uh, of the tanks. So that's the one so that that was a comment for me the question however is i was trying to understand based on the issue around the applicant uh, seeking to apply for multi-year tariffs and us wanting to give them a year's tariff is there anything in the law that prohibits anybody coming and applying for a multi-year tariff i guess from where i'm sitting Chair, is that if one was in, in, in a, especially if you are building, if you have a particular, um, uh, if you are coming with a new facility which is funded, say by banks or whatever, I mean, in, in respect of how one would have built a business case and justified to the lenders um, the, the the kind of income stream, um, um, the income that may come from that particular. Um, uh, business venture, they would have put assumptions and the major assumption, the major assumptions, I guess, in this particular case would be assuming that the price is predictable. The major assumption, I guess, would be the volume throughput as they build, as they build the, the actual throughput. If it's a commercial um, activity, that the expectation is that if they've priced it, the the, 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 the the facility properly and there is a market for it and the market is growing is that the, the throughput or the use of the systems will grow with time. Now, 
I would have thought that it makes logical sense for business to then have to, to have multi-year tariffs than to have one-year tariffs, which might and might not be approved at any one point in time. So I guess with, with of course the proviso that if there's a change in methodology, um, that particular multi-year tariff could also be subject to to, the, to to that change. But I'm just trying to get guidance. Is there anything in the law that prevents these multi-year tariffs? Ten years, for instance, if somebody sought to ask for ten year tariff. That's number one. That's number two. So that 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 really is my question. The second, the third question. Um, which again, this one is just for clarity. I was just trying to understand, by the way, in terms of Petrol and Pipelines Act, I should know this, but I don't. Are these tariffs that we approve maximum tariffs or the tariffs? Can people discount on those tariffs or are the tariffs that are charged as in terms of the act? If once we've granted a particular tariff, uh, if there's a difference between what is applied for, for instance, and what and and and, and what NASA approves, um, is the applicant forced to use that tariff as the tariff, or can they offer discounts? That are thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kumede. Uh, over to you, uh, Madam Tua, and your team. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I think um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Boko and Mr. Baker will assist. I, I know that uh, Mr. Baker also deals with economic data, so it will be best to answer that one. But in terms of the tariff, we do uh, approve maximum tariff. And uh, you will see on the discussion, uh, Mr. Kumete, uh, of item 10, where we then compare what we have approved and what has been charged by most companies. Uh, maybe we can also bring back that discussion uh, around that that item. But uh, I don't know, Mr. Bagay, you want to come first and then Ms. Boko. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Motwa. Um, with regard to the question uh, regarding the economic data, if whether we have the economic data sufficient for the MITAs, we do not have the economic data for the multi-year reason being that uh, the economic data is normally made available uh, quarterly by the source. The only data that we have for the multi-year is for the beta values. But then with regard to the CPIs, it's normally published by the state SA uh, every Wednesday of the third quarter. So in most of the cases when the applicants apply, we do not have that data available. So meaning we only have that data for um, for one financial year. And um, with regard to the, if this tariff is combined in, into one, uh, no, this tariff is for the loading and the storage facility. So it's, they applied separately. So meaning that uh, it is not combined. And uh, with regard to the question by um, Mr. Kumede regarding if we approve the maximum tariff, we yes, we do approve the maximum tariffs and our licenses are allowed to discount. Uh, and, okay, I can see Madam Masetti's hand is up. Madam Masetti. Thank you, Chairperson. It's a follow-up, Chairperson. Uh, if we have, um, I understand that um, in our tariff methodologies, we do allow um, for a multi-year or one year, depending on what we have before us. So I, uh, I wanted to find out then if we have information that will uh, enable us to at least make an informed decision only for one year. Um, uh, why are we then proposing uh, or are we? Um, um, are, are you recommending that we approve for uh, for three years? I suppose um, uh, the, 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 there is no um, um, there is no harm. I mean, I provided two options. The first option for the one year, it is for purposes of enabling the regulator to make an informed decision to have the relevant information at its disposal at the time of taking the decision. 
I think that becomes very important for the other years that we are required to take the decision. Without information that will make us comfortable in taking an informed decision, that then becomes a challenge because it will mean that we don't have the relevant information at our disposal. And I think there is also um, a senior council opinion uh, in that regard, as I had requested it, um, uh, particularly for instances where we might be tempted to take decisions when information that we ought to have had at the time of taking the decision, it is not there. So it was meant to deal with that risk. Hence, um, I requested the senior council opinion, which is there. So that's the first thing uh, for the one versus the, the multi-year. I also then said that to the extent that there is certain information uh, that might then sort of um, persuade us to take a decision for a three-year three -year, uh, multi uh, three -year tariff, then we should then be in a position to require that the, the licensee submit on an annual basis within this period um, actual volumes achieved as well as the actual data that has now changed the parameters and the assumptions that were submitted to us, that will then come through the clawback period for adjustments. So that is the part that um, I wanted to just find out why and, and also provide this other option if it's for three years so that we cover it in our decision. Uh, should we not have sufficient information that will make uh, um, enable us to make a proper decision for the other two years of this tariff? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Asseti. Maybe before you you, you come in, uh, Madam Bogo, I just would like to 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 also confirm my my understanding of the issues. Is that there was a, a request for 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 two years? For, 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 for three years, and then with the, the, the approval is for the three years, looking is for the two years, looking at the, the, the data that we have in terms of the economic data as already uh, articulated by Madam I don't want to go back to repeat that. But the, we also considering the fact that we are now in the eighth month uh, for, for this uh, 2022 uh, year, then, then it made sense that 2023 to be also covered because 2024 then is the outlying year, which will will, will require a, a, some kind of understanding in these two years, which is actually uh, a year and a, and a half, more or less. Uh, uh, um, uh, and then go on then and, and, and have better information to move on to, 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 year, uh, to, to the third year going forward. There is nothing that is uh, 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 precluding um, the the energy regulator to 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 set multi-year tariff tariffs, and as a result, uh, that will will become better when when there is some information, some base information that even the applicant would be able to 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 utilize. Noting that the applicant is moving for for it to mean to, to 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 make it easy to get uh, uh, players on board uh, uh, other third, the third parties hence then the the understanding uh, uh, that um, uh, we we've got this uh, uh, this stance uh, not necessarily uh, uh, being refuted by by the applicant seeing that uh, it is also uh, meeting it's, it's the requirement halfway, uh, unlike in a situation where maybe there will be that need for, 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 for certainty because they want to be able to have uh, to, to recoup uh, investment, which in any case will also be counter uh, intuitive since the, the tariffs will be higher and not necessarily help in terms of bringing uh, third parties on board. If you can just uh, uh, talk to that issue, um, uh, Madam Bogo, in your response, just to confirm if my understanding is correct. And I also noted that um, uh, Madam Tua has also referred us to paragraph 25 of the submission. Um, and I, I don't know if uh, Mr. Kumede, you want to, to touch on, 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 on anything 
on anything there because that that paragraph 25 talks to the issue of uh, the stock tens uh, which which it, it remains uh, confidential but you can see it for yourself there uh, maybe before you respond Ms. madam uh, uh, Boko, Mr. Kumete, I see your hand is up. If you can just quickly chip in. Uh, Chairperson, I was actually happy to wait for, uh, for, for Madam Bogo to, um, to, to to respond first, because all I wanted to indicate is from, from where I'm sitting, uh, Chairperson, is that I'll be uncomfortable that if a client, if an applicant applied for three years, that we only grant them one year. I can't see the reason for that personally, that except if our view was that uh, in terms of the difference, the, the likelihood <clears throat> is that uh, they were applying for lower volumes and they would be able to get a better tariff, but they were likely to get very high volumes, higher than the, the actual volumes applied for. But as clearly indicated in paragraph 23 for me, I and mean, there's so much headroom there that, that the profit possibility of that happening at the moment is very, very low. I think for me, Chair, what I would want us to guard against is that as as the regulator it is clear that the regulated entities are also um, are open to the business and volume risk and clearly they have their um, the end and they are the ones that are supposed to plan for that volume risk so from where i'm sitting is that i would think that if somebody has applied for three years and yes of course in the first few years they might not even reach the kind of revenues that um, they um, would, uh, would would put them on a would give them a, a profit. That's the nature of business. That when we do these business cases, in some cases even up to five years, where you only break even after year five and only start seeing profit after year six, seven, eight, whatever. Now, unfortunately, that's unless we've got that business case. I think we must be very careful as the regulator. To, to understand that, for instance, in this particular case, they applied for three years. For me, the way I would have looked at it, especially looking at the, at, at the differences in terms of, uh, uh, which, which are clearly indicated in paragraph 23, is that they are, are, they, it's going to take them a very long time before they can even reach that operational capacity that they have applied for. Now, yes, of course, it means they would have a less than, they would have a tariff, that perhaps is not going to give them a, the, the tariff itself, as long as it's cost reflective, um, they might not necessarily get a a, um, a a good revenue that that yields a a a a a profit in year one, two, or three because of loss, because of inadequate sales. But that's the business risk that the business is taking, and I think it's going to be important as as the regulator that we understand that and let business to be business. So, chairperson. All the point I'm trying to raise, I'll be very uncomfortable if it's been applied for as 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 as, as a three-year tariff, and they've applied using operational operational um, uh, volumes. I think we should personally. That's what I would support. I would I would not be able to support anything any different. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Uh, maybe prior prior to 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 Madam Bogo responding uh, in full, is that um. Uh, when I looked at this, I saw that uh, the, there is some opportunity still to look at the volume rules. If you recall that uh, the the um, volume uh, version five of of the uh, tariff uh, methodology has just been uh, recently approved, and the issue that is is uh, being refined with the with the applicants for them to to be able to understand is one that pertains to volume volume rules, which will will speak to this issue in particular. Because with with the clawback and everything, one might say that it's not entirely a, a fully fledged uh, uh, risk taking with in, in when it comes to 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 volume. Uh, so 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 the volume risk is actually a. Uh, 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 they, they 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 risk, but then they are able to claw back, which which is an issue that we wanted to be, to be able to deal with in terms of um, bringing in efficiency rules. The hence coming in with with the volume rules that deal with efficiency. Hence, 
the the stance that is taken when 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 I look at it, I I, I saw that there is some it it is a, a reasonable one taking that into consideration and the fact that. Uh, the the are the applicant also want to to better understand uh, the the business and then be able to provide information that will bring things to light so that a, a, a final decision can be taken in the outlying years that 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 was my understand that is my understanding Mr Kumet. um which which I I hope maybe does persuade you in terms of looking at the 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 two years effectively instead of the three years um. Madam Boko. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, with regards to the economic data, you are correct, Chairperson, we do now have um, economic data for the 2023 financial year. And, and with regards to the 2024 financial year, we, we still do not have a risk-free rate and MRP. However, um, with CPI, we do source... Um, uh, CPI focus from the Bureau of Economic um, Research, BER, and um, so with that gives us comfort. I, I also wanted to remind members of the previous decision pertaining to um, multi-year tariffs. Uh, in the past, we've had um, uh, licenses applying for tariffs for 2015 odd years, and the decision was taken that um, multi-year tariffs will be kept at three years because in as much as we may not have information relating to the risk-free rate and MRP, we, that, that information is based on month-to-month um, -month data for the preceding 30 years. So the fluctuations would not be as, 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 as much. So that decision was taken that um, would um, allow for maximum of three years. Uh, with regards to multi-year tariffs. And um, regarding the question from Ms. Masetti uh, pertaining to actual, us um, getting actual data for uh, volumes and tariffs, Ms. Masetti, yes, we do have a project where we get monthly volumes uh, from, from, from licenses. So this is what we will use to monitor the actual volumes uh, for this facility for the next three years if this decision is taken. And also there is another project, I think there's an uh, agenda um, item on that project for this meeting where we monitor actual tariffs charged. So that will be done. And uh, Ms. Sibage did confirm that uh, this the tariffs are for both licensed facilities, being the storage facility, there's a separate, uh, there are separate tariffs for storage facilities and there are also separate tariffs for the um, loading facilities. Uh, okay, I think the mistake of Meta's question re relating to stock tens has, has been addressed, paragraph 25. Um, and um, in terms of um, the law, of whether or not there is law prohibiting us from setting multi-year tariffs, um, there is no there is no provision or, 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 or a section of the law uh, Chairperson, that prohibits us from this. What has limited us in the past uh, from setting uh, multi-year tariffs for periods longer than three years has been the availability of data uh, or reliable economic data that may be used for determining tariffs. And um, yes, we are setting maximum tariffs and um, licenses are, are allowed to discount tariffs. And uh, however, we do monitor um, if whether or not they are, um, the licenses discriminate when they discount the tariffs. And this is um, in relation to the agenda item that we will be tabling at uh, today's meeting as well. Um, Chair, I think I have covered all the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Boko. Um, members, I just noted the, the recommendation which is on page uh, 13 of 38, uh, the green uh, numbering, um, uh, where the, the Petroleum Pipeline Subcommittee is uh, requested to approve the tariffs of um, 94.19 cents per litre and 94.12 cents per litre for the Camellia storage facility and the tariffs of um, uh, 25.47 
uh, cents per litre and 25.40 cents per litre for the communal loading facility for the 2022 financial year and the 2023 financial year respectively and uh, to also approve the decision and reasons for decision document attached here to as an HIA. Um, by sure of hands. Oh, Mr. Kumede, I see your hand is up. Are you voting or you still got some comment? Chairperson, I'm just raising a serious concern here. And, um, and, and, and it might affect my ability to vote. Because I, I, I think for me, I'm not sure why we can't approve multi-year tariffs with annual reviews to, to, to check whether some of the assumptions, because tariffing by its very nature in terms of it's, it's, it's actually forecasted, especially costs numbers, including any of the underlying e economic data, which is all forecasts, that is there any reason why we cannot approve um, multi-year with annual reviews in terms of those major assumptions that may have been reached. Chair, I am seriously concerned here that, for instance, when you look at any business, a regulated business, sorry, any business, that when you start in the first years and you hit those negative numbers, when you start hitting positive numbers, because now you've achieved your volumes that you had, you had, you, you had, which, which you had designed that facility to actually give. Then the regulator comes back and claws back that money. Would you claw back and take into account all of the losses that I would have made um, three or four years prior to me, uh, uh, even breaking even and making that profit? I, I, I chair, Chairperson, from where I'm sitting, is that I think regulation is intended to mimic business. In terms of business, if anything that if we need any data to be useful to actually get the business case that when they were building and making this facility, they would actually have, have used. And it's, and what I'm seeing here is that for me, we are one NASA. So for, for all of the IPPs in electricity, we give them a 20 year, 25 year tariff. Because it's important in terms of the price path for the investor to be able, even the, the funders, to be able to act to make sure that they, they, they've got a bankable business. So, Chairperson, I know that there were decisions that were made. I'm, I'm unfamiliar with that maximum three years decision and the reasons that 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 were were, were put forward to justify the the actual three years instead of um, the, the tariffs that may have been applied for. But from where I'm sitting, I do not see the logic, Chair. Thanks. Thank you. I think the issue that you are raising is then, um, because there, there, there are these reasons that have been advanced, but you, in other words, you are saying that the decision, the, the reasons advanced are not convincing. You rather go for a, a full three year instead of two years, and then have a, 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 an annual review of this. Uh, that is my understanding. Okay, so you agree to that, and then if then then it will be a question of uh, maybe members that we 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 decide that we go for three years, and then we 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 review annually, or we go for the two years as put forth. That for me would be a decision that we need to take. Based on the decision, based based on 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 the views that are on the table currently, uh, but I just want to to, be to also note that um, the the issue of of the years is will 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 be influenced by various factors, being the amongst others the uncertainty associated with the particular decision that we will be taking, as we have seen also in the case of uh, ESCOM in particular and and Transnet. Uh, the same has happened in the past, uh, where there were multi-year tariff applications, but uh, the decision was then to 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 only approve for one year. Uh, sub, I mean, due to those uncertainties, uh, so it, it, whatever decision that you could have taken is not necessarily um, uh, out of the the norm, so to say. Uh, but um, I do appreciate the 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 your 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 reasons. For, for your stance, I would then give Madam uh, Masetti a uh, uh, say as well as advocate and then uh, move to a decision. Uh, 
Thank you. Over to you, Madam Masetti. Thank you, Chairperson. I think, Chairperson, uh, it's important that uh, even when we state our views, that um, it's at some stage um, uh, before we get to a decision that we must convince each other. And um, if, if there are good reasons uh, that are advanced uh, in terms of uh, uh, persuasion uh, to come to a uh, sort of a, a uniform decision. Um, Chairperson, I, 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 I am now persuaded um, that we can look into the three-year period. Um, the issue of other longer uh, uh, periods, it's something else and there's other risk. And I think we can look into these cases uh, on, on these applications on a case by case basis because information and facts are not the same and there are other uh, serious risk now on the on the on the on the issue on on this issue uh, or this particular application um i think the basis of my support of a three year period uh, firstly is the one that was stated that um, the tariff itself is based on operational volumes capacity, and that actually uh, ameliorate the risk of under recovery. I think the secretary must then maybe um, uh, note that because then it gives us that comfort, because it uh, it it ameliorates that risk of under recovery. Um, uh, uh, if now it's they are going to commit to using the operational um, uh, capacity. And then the second thing, it provides the certainty and predictability uh, for business. So, uh, which is w one thing that we want to provide as the regulator. So that will be the second grounds for me, Chairperson, if I were to advance my my, my reasons uh, for supporting three years, uh, and also those reasons be recorded. And then the third thing that um, I, 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 I will say that that three years is actually um, a, a good period. It is because of uh, uh, the fact that um, I think the, the other, the third point is that NERSA does not set, but it approves in this particular case because we are not looking at the tariffs for pipelines where we are required to, required to set, but here. We are looking at the tariffs for loading facilities and storage, and therefore our powers are to approve what has been applied for. And in this case, there's a three-year period. So that's what I would also advance as the third reason for, uh, for uh, supporting it. And then the third, uh, the fourth reason is that um, we have been informed that the economic data for um, uh, 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 the economic data is available for the first two years, and there is some data for 2024, 2025. But I am saying that even with the potential um, uh, uh, sort of uh, volatility that one would be worried about if you don't go too far and not having sufficient data is eliminated here or is, 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 is reduced here because of the fact that the tariffs is limited to the operational capacity. So that tends to also deal with potential fluctuations and volatility of the tariff at the, to the detriment of customers or other third parties. So on those four bases, Chairperson, I will say uh, I'm in support of the, uh, of the three-year period, and, and those are the reasons. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, I'll start off with the uh, advocate. Uh, do you have any comments? Yes, Chair, I do. Chairperson, I support the multi-year uh, 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 approval with annual reviews as advanced by Mr. Mr. Kumete. And Chair, my reasons for this would be that um, with a three-year uh, approval, we are going to give the licensee some certainty and predictability for them to plan um, uh, whatever they need to plan in terms of their business processes. However, on an annual basis, we really need to have those reviews because the assumptions that are made in the application, we do not have um, a definite, uh, we do not have certainty that they will prevail up until the end of that particular uh, three-year period, and hence the need for the annual reviews. Chairperson, we have also done this in other applications. I think you have mentioned yourself with ESCOM, where we often have reopeners where there are 
certain issues within the economy or in terms of their operations that needs to be taken into account. Uh, and, and Chair, based on that, um, I would uh, support uh, the proposal made by Mr. Kumete. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yeah, as as I articulated earlier on, I was uh, I'm very much indifferent on of 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 whether it's the two or the three. But what persuades me with the three years is the fact that uh, there are going to be these annual reviews. Uh, uh, one, two is that uh, there will be also this volume reporting that takes place on a monthly ba monthly basis being tracked, and because it takes time to 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 package a, 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 an application. I think giving them an extra year to refine the application, uh, if need be, would also be, be, be handy. So I, I, I do then um, uh, also um, align myself with, 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 the, um, with the three years for, for that particular, for, for these particular reasons. Um, therefore, then um, members, uh, it means then the, the, the recommendation will we'll read as follows that um, the petroleum pipeline subcommittee is requested uh, to approve the tariffs for 94.19 cents per liter uh, 94.19 cents per liter uh, and also 94 uh, the decision and reason for decision document uh, which is attached at uh, uh, here to as annexure a uh, with with the the the, the enhancements uh, in line with the, the revised uh, uh, recommendation. By show of hands, uh, members, if you uh, support this recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Kumete, uh, Madam Masseti. I also uh, support. Uh, thanks also, Advocate Tolle. This then concludes item 11. Let's then proceed to go to um, the 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 old item six, um, which uh, uh, is the um, engine petroleum limiters application for sec for the second amendment of the conditions of the combined license issued for the operation of these pipe petroleum pipelines and storage system in Island View uh, and prospecting Deben Wazum Natal province. Over to you, Madam Mtoa. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, this is also another uh, combined license uh, 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 restructuring. Um, Ms. Teriba will take us through. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. I uh, hope I'm audible. Uh, Chair, this is, uh, like Ms. Impassi, is another uh, combined license that we're trying to, to correct. Uh, if I take you to paragraph 5 on p page 439 of the cover submission, the initial license is described there that was issued as a uh, one for a petroleum pipelines and storage systems, something that is not recognized in the Act. The Act only recognizes a pipeline system. And in this case, that system consist of the items listed uh, under 5A to 5E. And Chair, just for ease of reading, if I were to swap B and D, such that uh, <clears throat> the pipelines in, in D actually are linked to, to A, actually. They interlink those facilities that are, are referred to uh, inside B and inside C. That's within the island view present. And uh, item C is the pipelines linking those facilities to the engine refinery, is about 80 kilometers away. Whereas uh, what I had as B, which is the crude oil tanks, the South Tank farm, are connected to the refinery from the SBM via item E. That's for importing crude oil into the refinery, refining it, and then uh, transferring it to, to Island View for, for, for transporting inland via the NPP or from coast to coast to the other parts of the country. So that, that whole setup, the way it is, also made it difficult to, 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 to set tariffs because now you're setting a tariff 
or approving a tariff for a pipeline story systems that consists of all of those uh, facilities, which is uh, rather odd. I mean, uh, I don't think that it's been done in the end. And there's a, that was identified also in uh, the command licenses a submission that it needs to be uh, corrected. So engine applied for the amendment as advised by NASA. And uh, if I had to take to paragraph nine on P, page five of 39. Uh, this amendment seeks to delete everything that refers to a system in this license and redefine all the pipelines interconnecting the sites in Island View to process pipelines rather than standalone pipelines and also to uh, make the pipelines linking the same facilities to the, to the beds, to be uh, auxiliary to those facilities. And then uh, include some of the new facilities that were, were, were never a part of the of this license, which are listed there in uh, 9D, E and F. And also then going down, G, remove the ballast water tanks that are not licensable. And some diesel tanks also that are being uh, removed because they're not uh, functional anymore. But most importantly, item I and J, 9I and J, those pipelines in I will be removed from this combined license and be moved into the uh, the Wendworth uh, storage facility license, which is part of the RTT project, if we were to recall it, as the one we had a public hearing on about and then uh, the south tank farm in j will have its own license separate license and uh, as it is right now uh, the south tank farm the submission is going for approval i think it's the rec date in august and uh, the rtt that will be going to pps in september it has to be delayed because of the objections and the uh, and the uh, the public hearing that was uh, held uh, regarding that matter. Uh, then, with this, basically, when you go to ten, paragraph ten, the, the the whole net result of this amendment for Island View will only have site B and C within the Island View present with all the interconnecting pipelines auxiliary to those facilities, as well as pipelines linking them to the baths and the, the NMPP. That will be like the only combined license that we have now as a net effect of this whole uh, 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 amendment. And the details of the tanks are contained there under table two and uh, three on P, 37 of 39. So that will be the, 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 the new combined license together with the pipelines that are interconnecting those uh, sites within Island View. So I have to indicate that there were no objections or requests uh, for a public to present uh, before the energy regulator uh, towards this uh, uh, amendment. And with that said, uh, we would recommend that the PPS uh, consider and uh, recommend this to, to the next ER for approval, as indicated in paragraph uh, sorry, uh, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, that will be basically entailing the uh, redefinition of the, the pipelines to auxiliary pipelines, reallocation of some pipelines and tanks to other licenses, as uh, indicated above, and removal of assets that do not require licensing from this license. 
as well as the municipal decision and at the end of that too. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Riba. Uh, members, any questions, comments or guidance? It's also one of those that uh, are dealing with the combined licenses so that they can be um, disaggregated accordingly. Uh, Madam Masetti. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, for the opportunity. Um, Chairperson, I just want to first um, uh, get clarified on the on the scope of this um, of this application or the decision that is required. Maybe I must say the decision that is required from us. Um, uh, the reason I'm asking for clarification is because um, it touches on the um, on on the on the on the tanks. Um, uh, or the operation of the uh, of, of of license at Wentworth um, uh, uh, for the for those storage tanks and 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 the pipelines there. So I wanted to just check whether chairperson uh, we could touch on those that pertain uh, to Wentworth. Um, I understand that there are there's, there's a proposal to remove certain uh, tanks. And some of those tanks then be um, uh, what is it to be included in the Wentworth license? So I just want to check just with regards to Wentworth before I go ahead, Chairperson, so that I don't have to uh, sort of mix up things or uh, include the things that are not necessarily the subject of today's discussion. If I may be clarified on that, Chairperson. But also having said that, it is important even when we look at this decision that is required, even if we can narrow it. Um, but the fact that there will be licenses that are removed from this one and be taken elsewhere where we have some concerns, uh, we need to then ask uh, certain questions uh, regarding those assets. So I just want to be clarified, Chairperson, on the scope so that I don't have to touch on things that are not necessarily for today's deliberations. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Riba, if you may just assist yeah. then to provide the clarity before we proceed. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, the tanks that are being removed are not going to Wentworth, uh, Ms. Masetti. There is a new application. That's the South Tank Crude Oil Tank Farms. Uh, it's a separate new application for those tanks. Uh, it's sitting on the far, far south of the sub-ref refinery together with a pipeline linking them to the engine refinery. That's the crude tanks. Uh, that's the one that's going to August. Uh, REC late, I think the 22nd, because of the, uh, the, the asset value. And now Wentworth is only the pipelines, I think seven of them, that are linking the Island View present to, 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 to the refinery, the eight kilometer pipelines. Those are the only ones that have been uh, moved into the Wentworth license. And linked to that, just to clarify, Wentworth license also entail the inclusion of tanks which are residing within the refinery, which were never part of our licensing process before. So those are, are not really linked to, to this particular one, except for those seven pipelines that are being uh, uh, relocated into the Wentworth license. But the, as far as the tanks are concerned, it's just the South Tank Farms crude tanks, which they applied for a new license for those. I'm not sure if I answer your question. Or did I confuse things further? <laughs> Madam Masetti, are you are you happy with the response? Yes, Chairperson, I am happy with the response. Thank you. Thank you very much. Having uh, received that response, um, I'll just then like to know: Are there any further questions, comments, or guidance? If not, uh, well, let's just proceed to the 
um, recommendation, which is to request the Petroleum Pipeline Subcommittee to consider. Chairperson. Yes, yes, ma'am. Sorry, Chairperson, I didn't want to lead you. Um, we will ask whether I'm, I'm happy with the response, and I said yes, Chair. Uh, may I then take the opportunity uh, to sort of get clarity then on this particular application? Oh, okay, proceed then, ma'am. Uh, and then you you let me know then when 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 you hit so you can move to a decision. Thank you. Yes, yes, chair. thank you, chair. Chairperson, I mean we have been informed uh, that uh, there are issues uh, that are of concern with regards to um, the approval uh, that is sought uh, for the issuing of the new license, and that we know that it is for th those different storage tanks, but also for the amendment of the Wentworth. And if you look at this at, at at the background and also the discussion on of this part of this application, um, it 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 does um a, a touch on those uh, the linkages. I think the linkages chair uh, to the Wentworth, and I would like to then understand uh, how do we then address the issues that are contested or at least in so far as or to the extent to which they link up with this particular application, uh, Chairperson, uh, uh, so that we don't leave those things out at this stage and only just say we will deal with, with, with some of them when we um, consider the matter that involves the Wentworth um, um, uh, uh, amendment of the license that that is still to come to us, as well as those uh, tanks uh, that are uh, involved in that license. But to the extent that there, that there are those linkages with this one, uh, I would like to just be clarified as to how do we mitigate uh, against uh, the concerns that are raised, uh, as we have also noted in this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. If there are no other concerns or, or, or questions, I mean, and and and, and comments or or guidance, um, over to you, to you, Mr. Riba, to respond with the assistance of the team, where well required. Yeah, uh, thanks, Chair. Um, uh, uh, like I said, I mean, the the main contested issue here is the RTT which mainly involves the inclusion of the, the tanks that are in the refinery, which is what was being disputed there. Already the Wentworth license is there. It is, um, I don't see how removing these pipelines from this one into the Wentworth will really uh, 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 jeopardize that, that, that process because the my understanding, the, the issues raised at the public hearing were mainly due to the tanks that are within the refinery, not this particular pipelines per se. However, the, 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 the pipelines are being moved from this license into the Wentworth one as part of the combined license. That the Wentworth license already exists in any case. The issue there is inclusion of the additional tanks to make that site a big site, a storage site. In that context, I don't, I don't know if that really will really affect that part. However, the STF tanks, as far as I know, there were no objections for that license to be issued. The notice on comments ended on the 15th of June. There were no comments for that. There, were, there was no issue about it, even at the public hearing. So, yeah. Uh, don't see any issues there from my side then. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Untit. Thank you, Chair. Just to add on to what Mr. Riba said, if the members may be wondering why we're bringing these applications uh, sort of ad hoc or, or separately, our delegation matrix also is, is a bit challenging in the sense that the one facility being depreciated STF is is, is worth is REC delegation and this one must go to ER and and therefore and there was objections which stopped the clock on that one and we had to have the public hearing so I just wanted to give the context I think Ms. Masetti 
this concern about the linkages is, is valid. And and maybe we can just, I'm not sure how, how if we could, could wait with this because we've got the delegation, it has to go to the ER, one has to go to REC. I'm not sure if, if that extra context also help you why we're only bringing this one today, uh, Ms. Masetti. Thank you, Mr. Untit. Madam Masetti, are you are you happy with the responses? Uh, any further? I, I, I am happy, Chairperson, um, and my questions were only yeah. to deal with the risk because of the implications yeah. of this one, what we do on this one, uh, uh, to the other one. Uh, hence, I said um, uh, then because of those linkages, it would have been very useful if uh, we were to consider them simultaneously. But, Chairperson, I don't propose any other thing. If the team says that um, or gives the, the regulator members comfort that there are no risk, um, at, at least on this one, that will um, uh, affect uh, the other one. Uh, if we do something here, we need to finish it off on the other side. That is the main issue here. Um, so if we're not considering them at the same time, there is that uh, sort of gap. But I do understand that because of a serious con 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 contestation uh, with regards to the other one, uh, the, um, the time period had to be extended. And therefore, they wanted to uh, finalize this one because it is subjected to 60 uh, days, which is a statutory time period. Thank you, Chairperson. I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Uh, may I then move to the recommendation, um, which is on paragraph 41, which is to request the Petroleum Pipeline Subcommittee to consider and recommend to the energy regulator for the approval of A, the second amendment of the conditions of the combined license issued for the operation of um, uh, engine uh, uh, petroleum pipelines and storage system in Island View and prospecting Teben Guazulu Natal province, uh, which entail the redefining some pipelines to auxiliary pipelines, reallocating some pipelines and tanks of other licenses, and removing assets that do not require licensing in terms of the Petroleum Pipelines Act, uh, Act number 60 of 2003. And um, B, the decision and reasons for decision document attached here to annexure A, and C, uh, the addendum to the conditions of the combined license issued to engine for the operation of its petroleum facilities, which is attached uh, as um, annexure one of the uh, decision and reasons for decision document. Um, by show of offense, members, if you support the, the recommendation, Thank you, Mr. Kumete. Thank you, Advocate Tolle. I also do support from my side. Thank you, uh, Madam Masetti. This then concludes uh, item six. Uh, we then pro proceed to item seven, um, which is the, uh, the decision and reason for decision document uh, uh, submission uh, on the Total Energies Marketing South Africa, P2R LTD's application for the first amendment of the conditions of the license issued for the operation of its petroleum storage facility in Ar Road, um, Albertine, Gauteng Province. Over to you, Madam Twa and your team. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, Mr. Rima will still assist on this one as well. Uh, just to highlight the, the addition of the two newly constructed uh, uh, storage uh, tanks. Um, that will be added on the existing operational license. Mr. Riva, thank you. Thanks. Um, the, yeah, this, this uh, as Mr. Ms. Mutai is saying, is uh, just to include the newly constructed tanks in our road. Uh, it's about 10,000 meter cubed each for ULP 95. Uh, if uh, members may recall, early this year we did approve uh, the extension for the completion of the construction of these tanks to March of 2022. So this application was submitted 
subsequent to that to operationalize these tanks uh, by adding them into the existing operations license and the which is as required by law as you know uh, the act does not allow any 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 operation of tanks without a license so total's application is basically to 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 comply with the requirements of the act by uh, uh, requesting this amendment uh, in in brief the these tanks will just increase the capacity by about 2 million liters per se, as indicated in table 2 and 3 on page page 5 of 29 and uh, page 7 of 29 uh, the site visit i mean site layout as well on page 7 of 29 so yeah it's as uh, we normally do uh, all newly uh, constructed uh, tanks are included into the condition of license and this facility does have a, a existing tariff and uh, total is committed to applying for a review tariff review which was supposed to be submitted by end of july and as we know we've been having uh, issues with emails i haven't checked with colleagues whether they've received anything yet but there was a commitment to 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 comply with that and there was a letter sent out reminding them as well to please review the the, the tariff to include these newly constructed tanks chair with that said we'd like to request the uh PPS to 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 approve uh, this uh, amendment uh, as set out in uh, uh, paragraph 38 uh, of P11 of 39, uh, as well as the rules for decision and the addendum to to the to this uh, license. Thank you. And and sorry by uh, correction the. Under the, the last recommendation is not a combined license. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a normal license. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Riba. Any um, comments, questions, uh, guidance members? By show of hands. Thank you, Mr. Kumete. You may uh, proceed to ask the question or comment chair i support the uh, the recommendations i just have um firstly just i think can you correct paragraph 36 i don't think it reads well for me it, it reads as if the para the the public the public hearings will, will it say the data probably needs to be communicated to to the um to to, to the license it, it doesn't read well it it's um it's it's more futuristic if if, if that can be uh, corrected. Um, but the question I wanted to ask, Chair, and it's just for information. Removal of 93, does it mean that um, um, this entity is no longer going to be trading in 93? And how does this talk to, is this not, can this not be seen as a, because I, I believe this is the one that is, uh, it is 93 that is being, uh, if you like, Deregulated. Um, is this uh, how does this talk to that um, to, to the proposal by the department in terms of moving from the price in terms of 93 to a maximum price? Thanks, Chair. Chair, it doesn't affect my decision. I'm just uh, it's it's just for information. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Kometa. Um, Mr. Riba, if you may respond. Chair, I. Thanks. Yeah. I, I stand corrected there. Maybe Mr. Wintit can assist here. This is a pipeline connected facility, and I'm not sure if they transport the 93 through, through those uh, pipelines and more MPP. Mr. Wintit can assist me there. Thanks. Mr. Wintit? Yeah, thank yes. you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Kuberi, uh, I think we are streaming, so I'm not sure how, how, how detailed I can go about what, what they plan to do. But effectively, what you're saying is correct. 
uh, if we look at the volume reports that the 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 the, the demand for 93 uh, has, has, has decreased and this whole um, gazetting of, of that maximum cap not to just release the price is also to maybe simplify the logistics because what happens now that 93 slug which if low demand will be blocking diesel or 95 which is in demand sitting at the back of of packed in the line so it does also complicate logistics and obviously for them to keep optimize the storage capacity they need that so in terms of the actual detail plans maybe we we, we can we can engage on that offline but yeah i think yeah you, you you basically it could well be that they will be moving out of 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 stocking that product like the, the companies has done with moving out 500 diesel it just naturally happened that they removed it and converted those tanks to 50 ppm uh, we, we 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 suspect the same will be going because the demand the, all the new vehicles in the last two years, your war warranty is void if you don't use 95, which is prescribed. Therefore, the customers is reluctant to put in 93, and it's also got to do with the old octane boosting and what the refineries can produce. So some of the refineries battle to produce 95. Um, yeah, so I think it, it's it's efficiencies, it's yeah, there's a lot of things, but what the detail plans are, um, I think we, we don't have that that details. Thanks. I, I've seen that Mr. Kumete is happy with your response, uh, and uh, I think it would be worth uh, just also engaging um, offline, um, noting that uh, by the look of things, uh, uh, 93 will most likely suffer the same fate of uh, 91 um, um the, the 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 octane uh, run uh, uh, 91 uh, in the in the in the former years uh, having said that uh, may we then please uh, move to the recommendation if there are no further comments questions or matters of uh, guidance I'll go to paragraph 38, um, which um, requests the Petroleum Pipeline Subcommittee to consider and approve the first amendment of the conditions of the license issued to Total Energies for the operation of a storage facility in Al Road, Alpatin, Houghton Province, which entails the following one the inclusion of two newly constructed 95 unleaded petrol. Uh, ULP 95 tanks, um, which is uh, um, uh, 10,534 um, cubic meters and um, 10,551 cubic meters, respectively, um, with a combined design capacity of 21,085 uh, cubic meters. Uh, Secondly, the removal of 93 unleaded petrol, ULP 93, as a stored product in the conditions of the license. And uh, thirdly, the updating of the conditions of the license to indicate that all the tanks 20, 21, 24, 25, 28, 29, and 30 will now store 50 ppm diesel, D50, instead of petrol. Uh, that one with a combined capacity, design capacity of 22,233 cubic meters. Uh, the committee is also requested to consider and approve the, the decision and reasons for decision document, which is attached as um, an HRA, as well as the addendum to the conditions of the combined license issued to total energies for the operation of historic petroleum uh, facilities which is attached as an extra one of the decision and reasons for decision document. By show of hands, members, if you support this recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Kumete. 
I also do support. Uh, thank you, Advocates Tolle. I'm missing. Um, uh, Ms. Masetti has, seems to have challenges, as she's indicated on the chat that she has challenges and she was, she was disconnected a while ago. Oh, um, Madam Aswangai, if you may try maybe to, to assist her to, to, to reconnect, but um, on the on the basis that uh, the majority of the members have, have uh, um, supported the approval of this uh, uh, recommendation, um, we'll, we'll then proceed to item eight, which is a research paper, uh, research paper number one on the scope into the state and development of um, competition in the um, in the petroleum uh, uh, pipelines industry. Uh, over to you, Madam Tua and your team. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, as you indicated, this is one of three research papers that uh, we hope to uh, deliver to the PPS. Uh, maybe just to remind the members that uh, this financial year we are busy with the review of the tariff methodology for the pet for, for the petroleum pipelines uh, uh, tariff um, and methodology. Uh, therefore, we have started with the first paper to look into the review, and um, Ms. Yogana will give us details on the uh, the process forward and uh, details around the, the the findings on this research paper. Ms. Yogana, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning, uh, members and colleagues. So the purpose of the submission is to request the PPS to note the first research paper um, of the Pipelines Tariff Methodology Review Project, which outlines the state and development of competition in the petroleum pipelines um, market of South Africa, attached here to as Annex Chair A. The Petroleum Pipelines um, Regulation Division concluded the re review of the methodology for the approval of tariffs for loading and storage facilities in the last financial year and has now embarked on a process of reviewing um, version 7 of the methodology for the setting of tariffs for petroleum pipelines. It is therefore anticipated that the revised um, tariff methodology for pipelines, which will then be version 8, will be approved by the end of this financial year in March um, of 2023. The areas of review um, include the two main components, the first one being the efficiency benchmarking leading to the development of an efficiency adjustment factor in the allowable revenue formula and the second one is the efficiency benchmarking leading to the development of an efficiency adjustment factor, um, which will be distinctive to the Transnet Pipelines Network as a monopoly. And so this research paper presents an analysis of the um, competitive state of the petroleum pipelines market um, which has tariffs regulated by the energy regulator through the tariff methodology under review. The paper will then fit into the review of the methodology project. In terms of the um, methodology applied in the paper itself, um, we used the market shares, um, the concentration ratios, as well as the heffendahl hesman Index analysis to measure the level of concentration. And the market shares, as well as the concentration ratios, um, illustrate an, an oligopoly competition in the crude refinery segment, as well as a monopoly um, market, rather, in the petroleum pipelines market. And the heffendahl hesman Index um, value also for the petroleum pipelines segment also shows that there's no competition in that market, with Transnet being the monopoly um, in that narrow market for uh, primary transportation of crude by pipelines. 
Further, the um, index also for the petroleum refinery segment of the industry confirms the results um, and the indications of the concentration ratios, as well as um, the market shares. That is, the market is concentrated as a, an oligopoly um, competitive market. So in conclusion, the paper finds that uh, competition appears to be relatively low um, to medium in the petroleum industry and uh, in the petroleum refinery industry, and it's non-existent in the petroleum pipelines segment of the industry. Um, a few factors contribute to this phenomenon, including the vertical agreements between the major oil firms um, and the petroleum pipelines infrastructure, as well as the coordination, um, such as the joint ventures between the major oil firms amongst um, other issues. We also illustrated the barriers to entry into the industry, and we did um, a, an international benchmarking study which included the um, USA, Europe, and um, Russia, as well as other African countries. And so it is recommended that the PPS notes um, the research paper entitled um, Research Paper 1, the scope into the state and development of competition in the petroleum pipelines. Um, it's attached here to is Annex Chair A. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam Yogana. Any comments, questions, um, guidance members? Is the committee may come inside? Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Just the, uh, a comment and a question. The question being, to what extent is our research aligned with the what is I I see in paragraph in paragraph forty two, for instance, um, as you say, the more research and discussions need to be conducted, focusing on the policy and legislative de development. But I, I guess for me, to what extent. In, in in choosing the topic and the sequencing of the of of your of, of of the research that we undertake, how is that affected, and how does that seek to influence? I guess um, I would assume it's also about advocacy. How does it seek to influence the decisions that are being made, and um, how relevant would it be if it seems like the path that we are on is that the liquid fuels industry will be deregulated and to what extent would a deregulated liquid fuels industry still require regulation of the infrastructure supportive that um 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 thereof i don't know i'm, I'm just chair I'm, i may be struggling to put the question co coherently but I'm, I'm i'm hoping my question is clear um the the comment, though, that I wanted to raise is in respect of when we do these comparisons um, um, or rather these estimations, for instance, we reach a conclusion that says there is, there is no competition in terms of pipeline. But are we, are we in fact, is that conclusion correct in the sense that if, if they may, we, we may not be looking for pipeline to pipeline competition, which I guess is the whole reason why we, it's, we, we prefer one pipeline rather than many pipelines. But it's about pipe, it's about transportation via pipeline as compared with uh, transport, transportation with other modes of, 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 of transport. For instance, I think, as I've raised it uh, a few times in the committee, that when we compare pipeline tariffs, because in respect of pipeline, we need to have a pipeline, then storage, then in a secondary, uh, secondary distribution. That when we are comparing that against road, for instance, we, we need to know that road is point to point. So it's from the refinery or from the uh, um, coastal um, storage straight into a final destination. And therefore, 
when we look at at, at uh, when we do this analysis, to what extent do we include that? That is, it's not really when we're talking. I'm 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 uncomfortable with this. There is no competition in pipeline when, in fact, it may be misleading, in the sense that um, if the pipeline tariffs, um, uh, the combined pipeline tariffs plus storage plus on plus on delivery, uh, is is greater, much greater than the cost of transporting by road. Um, it, it, it effectively, pipeline therefore would definitely have competition. But it's not pipeline to pipeline competition. So those are the issues, Chairperson. But I'm, I'm I'm hoping I was clear with my first question. It may not be, it may not have been as complete, as as coherent as I would wish it to be. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Kumete. Understood. Um, Madam Masetti, I know that you also have got the difficulty in raising your hand. Feel free to chip in. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, please bear with me. My machine is very slow in, 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 um, even to participate here, but Gerald is working on it, has been assisting me. Um, uh, Chairperson, um, on, on, on this report, I think uh, it is important, uh, and this is aligned also to the question raised by Mr. Kumede. I mean, the, the very first step in any competition inquiry, even to assist with the scoping of it, we will not be in a position to conduct any uh, competition, the nature of it and the variables that needs to be analyzed so that those variables, when they are analyzed, they will then tell us about the state of competition. We will not be able to do a thorough job if we do not start with the first step, first step which is that we need to first look into the, the, the industry structure and then define the market that we want to uh, look into and, and assess competition in. Because now we're going to be going all over, touching things going there and touching other things that we say here, they also did this there. But for our own, let's define uh, the market first, that this is the market that we're looking at here. And what are the features of this market? The features that... Uh, uh, trigger concerns or that are not working well or making this market function the way that we, in, we would like it to function. Then when you check those things, you are then able to say, what exactly is the problem there? Maybe because you look into the structure and you also look into the conduct. And I believe that uh, Ms., uh, also Ms. Yokoana says um, there are some well, even though it, she didn't put it in so many words, that there are structural issues as well as behavioral issues. And maybe that might be the findings, but again, we don't understand those behavioral issues that are there. Because if you failed right at the beginning to define the market, you can't proceed with any inquiry on competition. So, so and that is why now you will not be in a position to separate issues of uh, the parameters of that competition, whether the pipeline, the road, and other means of transport first. But apart from that, at what level are we looking at here? Midstream, downstream, upstream? What are we looking at here? Where do we want to concern ourselves here? And then look into these modes of transport that may also be impacting. Look into the infrastructure where it is located and the ownership thereof, so that you can also understand in terms of ownership concentration and the extent to which uh, ownership concentration could impact on, on competition here. And what is it that the regulator might look uh, might, might want to do and be guided by the objectives of the act. There might also be not just a concentration based on ownership, but market concentration. And then you define that market concentration, how it happens and to what extent does it then um, might, 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 uh, would it lead to maybe uh, abuse of market power or which parties have market power? Because by defining the market, it will then point you to issues of market power. 
which is the basis for the existence of the regulator anyway, that even if it was a natural monopoly, why you will regulate, you regulate because you want to curtail and constrain that market power. But if you undertake this kind of exercise and you don't do market definition, that will then help you to identify market power and be able to say that these are the things that are manifested by this market power. And those things that are manifested are those things that Mr. Komeda also touched on, which I also touched on, which are then your indicators of competition that you want to check if they are working or not working. And why then are not working? Then you move nicely in that kind of uh, assessment uh, uh, up until then you are able to say the structural issues that are working, what can be done, what are the measures that you are proposing even in this to deal with the structural issues. Obviously, we can't change things, but I think we can influence um, uh, uh, the behavior given the, the structure that we have. Um, so so for me, I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a number of things that uh, sort of need to be sort of uh, repackaged uh, here and also uh, in the way that we approach the inquiry uh, i think it would assist if uh, perhaps the team uh, i mean even if they even conduct some interviews within nersa just to you know uh, with other divisions and, and 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 others to just say that we're conducting this research and um, this is what we are looking at you kind of get some benefits there because you can get guidance and you are able to sort of um, have a proper framework that will assist your inquiry and 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 the kind of findings then and the outcomes that um, uh, will come out of that research document. But as it is, I really struggled, uh, Chairperson, to even say that we'll get, then get to a research project number two. The focus, you know, uh, for me, it is a it, it is it is a problem. Uh, because we then throw in all of these things about volume, whatever, uh, without not in a structured way. Uh, so, uh, and I see that you have got the HHIs there in terms of trying to, you know, estimate market concentration and market power. We know that it is not the appropriate proxy or a sufficient proxy, but that you can't just throw it in without checking the market definition. And then after market definition, you come to market concentration and all of those things and market power, it's in that sequence. Um, so I struggle because then we throw in all of these concepts, chairperson, without doing it in a structured and uh, a structured way uh, for a better understanding and assessment of the issue. Uh, that, that is my uh, sort of contribution, chairperson, in terms of enhancement and improvement. Uh, on this report, and um, some of us are available to to can assist when uh, we are approached uh, just to um, have a document that we can be proud of uh, that can be put out there. But I do also appreciate the effort, but I think it can be improved on chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. In the main, that those are the um, the, the, the enhancements that the team needs to 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 to, to have made a tour in the team. I, I think of, of importance is the issue of scope. Uh, if you if you if, when when looking at the scope, it's um uh, when you're talking competition, I, I think uh, there there are also issues of ports of entry. There are issues of other modes of transport. Um, that that also uh, uh, come in here. There are also matters that that pertain to 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 alternatives or or, or, or possible uh, substitutions, uh, and you need to be able to 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 look at that in in terms of scoping. Start from that level and zoom down. And uh, when it comes to context, I think it's also important to 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 zoom into the context from the point of view that uh, for what towards towards which end is is this research paper because that also uh, just, just to highlight that i know that you've got that that context but just to to highlight it so that uh, is it, it just talks to the uh, rigor of 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 this exercise um uh, it, it, and 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 somehow also it's linked to the scope uh, because then you you look at the end, this being part and parcel of of the the the, the tariff uh, setting methodology for 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 pipelines, the the review thereof. So so if you can look at that, 
and and I think uh, maybe before you 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 also uh, respond, let me also touch on the issue around um, uh, the deregulation, or sometimes we'll refer it as as market liberalisation. Um, that 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 too, which you raised, Mr. Kumete, if if I understood you correctly, it's I think it's it's in line with what um, uh, one was uh, relaying to the team, uh, but last week to say um, there's a need to to have uh, projects, you know, of, of that nature, uh, ra running through our program office, which is uh, at, um, lead, uh, led by by Dr. Tholo. Um, just to 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 look at that impact in terms of possible uh, matters around deregulation, market liberalisation, also talking to the value add of of the the, the regulator. Um, that that though the that kind of uh, of a uh, of a, a, a project to also feed in in terms of um, uh, whatever uh, policy uh, suggestions might be coming to the fore. So that we can be able to provide valuable uh, insights in, in in that regard without necessarily being uh, self -pre preserving in our approach. Um, I, I I hope that then uh, also talks to the to the, to that issue that you raised, uh, Mr. Kumete, just to give you comfort that there is a, 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 pro, a one project that is looking at that at that aspect. Um, Madam Yogan and the team. You may just uh, briefly respond on this, noting that a bulk of these are actually um, uh, for 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 enhancement. And uh, please reflect on the on the request that I had made also to 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 engage with the the the, the people that are are, are, are tasked with the uh, competition issues, um, uh, Luis and 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 and, and the team. Uh, because it's important for us not to to just look at one at your not for you not to look at yourselves as a division, but to work across the board, even within uh, uh, NERSA. So please do respond then from your side. Over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you to the members for the comments. I think I'll start with the uh, question on um, the influence of the research paper. And the, before we started the review of the methodology, we basically have an understanding that the market is concentrated and as such, the main components of review have to keep in mind that we have um, the Transnet Pipelines Network um, that's basically dominating the market, especially the uh, from the coast to the inland um, geographic segment of the market. And so the, the purpose of the paper was not to basically um, influence the review process per se, but to just illustrate that what we are saying about the market um, being dominated by the Transnet Pipelines Network uh, is something that's factual. And so we decided to provide an outline of the, the market um, and to tie in with Miss um, Masetti's question on the segment of focus, so we were focusing on the midstream segment, which includes the um, refinery as well as the primary transportation by pipelines. And we went for pipelines because that's the regulated segment in terms of the methodology. And um, also on considering the other modes of transport and the competition that may come from those, we um, did come across some information and even with the interactions with some of the licenses, um, Transnet included, that the road is becoming a main competitor. Um, and at some points there were accusations of undercutting so that was going to be considered in the later stage when we are considering the implications of um, developing an efficiency adjustment factor for a monopoly um, to say there's now changes in dynamics in terms of um, the pipelines being the main um, mode of transportation for, for crude. 
Um, also, we will ex um, expand and enhance the the research as we work with the consultant also to um, refine the market definition as well as the structure. And we did look at the um, framework from GAS um, in terms of how they determine the adequacy of competition. And the difference was that theirs, um, they also include the bone indicator and um, we did not consider that as we just wanted to outline that this is the state of competition and this is why um, parts of the review um, are necessary for the methodology. However, we will continue to um, engage with Ms. Duplessy on um, the analysis of the market structure and um, narrowing the market definition to the pipelines um, for transportation by pipelines for crude. And we are also working on a project that's developing the volume risk sharing mechanisms, which some of the findings may contribute to the project in terms of that it highlights the other modes of transportation and the competition that it poses into the market. And that might also lead into the discussion on the deregulation and so on. Um, yes, we will uh, um, enhance according to the comments of uh, Ms. Massetti as well as Mr. Gumede, and we will continue consulting the other divisions. I think Ms. Mtua and Nobu will add. Thank you, Chair. Oh, sorry, I was talking to a muted mic. Um, I see that uh, uh, Madam Massachusetts hand is up. So maybe before I get to uh, Madam Mtua, let me give uh, Madam Massachusetts an opportunity to air views. Madam Massachusetts. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, I just want to assist by saying that uh, I can hear Ms. Yokwana is uh, really touching into a whole lot of things, and some of them, they depend on the basic, the basic paper that you could ever come up with for this industry, since it's the first one, is the one that will really look into just, first of all, start from the basics, defining that market. Look into the structure, first of all, how it is like the, the, the petroleum um, uh, pipelines industry look into that. Then after that, zoom into market definition. Because if the way the way that you have explained and clarifying things, I can see that you are touching on a whole lot of things. The bond indicator, we have not even used it ourselves. It was just an additional element. And it still it still it, it requires a lot of data. That's why we have not even implemented it yet we're doing it on a pilot basis so it has nothing to do with the competition assessment framework competition assessment framework we can customize it you can have you the, the oecd has its own competition framework how you actually assess competition you can have another one by the world bank we developed our own you customize it because some of the principles are basics and 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 so don't go anywhere else first can you just follow the, 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 the structured format and the frame, framework of assessing competition? And thereafter, you can do all of the other things that you are talking about, perhaps as phase two of your, as a follow-up project. After you have put the basic paper regarding assessment of competition and the approach that in this industry, you will follow, being comfortable in this industry, what you believe will be the appropriate approach and framework that you would follow in assessing competition in this particular industry. Don't go anywhere else. Otherwise, then it becomes a problem. I can, I can hear all of the other things that you are saying, uh, throwing them in. I think they are sort of problematic in the way that uh, you're touching on them. Please be focused. And uh, if you need assistance, uh, I think start with that with the framework first. You can compare our own framework uh, with the ones of the OECD and other organizations their basic economic principles for competition assessment issues, they are pretty much the same. You add certain things. That's all as the as as the as the as, as things develop in, in the in, in the industries. 
uh, in different industries. So that's all that I can say, Chairperson. I hear her response, but I think it needs some some guidance. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Madam Masetti. Uh, Madam Tua? Chair, um, I think maybe just to close the matter towards a decision, um, Ms. Masetti has uh, provided guidance, and um, I think what we can do is that we go back, then relook, uh, given all the guidance from the members, and also try to answer the questions that have not been uh, maybe uh, uh, thoroughly uh, uh, responded to from Mr. Kumede as well, and come back with a paper which is then enhanced with all, all the guidance that's been given and also addressing uh, the members' concerns. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Mr. Kumete, over to you, sir. Uh, Chairperson, can I just request that the handling of the two pipelines be dealt with slightly differently? Because, I mean, maybe even the question of whether uh, there's not dedicated infrastructure for those refineries, but also to consider um, not just the, the, the Devon leg, but to also consider the leg in, in, in Western Cape as well. But I think for me, I might, it might also assist us to get a, a feel with this study of the prospects of continued crude, crude refining in South Africa with all of the changes that are currently happening. Uh, I mean, the whole issue we, we, we was raised earlier around um, the, the, the major shift from um, 93 to 95 exerts, exerts its own challenges to uh, to to the farming in South Africa and also um, the fuel specification and therefore any comments that we make I think in respect of the infrastructure linked to that refinery to those refineries in terms of crude now I think it deserves a special dispensation so my guidance is that if we could separate the crude line the crude lines uh, from this assignment it might it might assist us and also just to give an indication, because also remember this, if this thing is geared up, if, if this report is, is are, are properly located, are properly located, they could um, very much assist the department in terms of the decisions that the department needs to make, especially in terms of local manufacturing of, of petroleum products in South Africa going forward. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I, I hear you members on this, uh, you know, uh, I'm just looking at um, the, the 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 snowballing of 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 issues uh, where we look at this matter. It triggers matters of deregulation, matters of uh, the the refinery, the infrastructure outlay that can then uh, follow after that, without necessarily uh, putting more and more on this, but. Uh, noting those and making sure that they are also followed up and executed. I think it it, it would assist uh, Madam Yogana that uh, uh, when when we have enhanced this document, um, we, we also get, uh, we workshop it in a way because there are a, a lot of issues that would emanate, uh, which I think that uh, it will also be be good for 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 a, a, a an, an internal engagement on this. So that 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 would be uh, my my proposal, members. I'm not so sure if you you would uh, support that. Uh, we 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 kind of be we 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 we, we have a workshop uh, on on this, um, noting the 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 matters that it also they they deal with. I note that Madam Masetti is, is uh, okay to that uh, we go this way. Thanks, Mr. Kumete, from your side too. Um, I don't know, Madam Advocate Stolle, if you support the issue of a workshop. I um, do, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Ma'am. Um, the, the, the recommendation was for us to note this research paper entitled Research Paper 1, uh, the scope into the state and development of competition in the petroleum pipelines industry of South Africa, uh, which is attached as an extra A to the to the submission. My my uh, request that members is that um, we, we 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 note the report uh, uh, with this research paper um, and uh, that uh, there are the enhancement that still need to be further done, uh, noting the comments 
uh, uh, guidance, uh, questions and responses that to that were provided during the meeting. Just for a show of hands, if you are you are happy to not subject to 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 this. Thank you, Mr. Kumete. Um, uh, thank you, Advocate Tolle. Uh, um, yes. I'm slow, slow chairperson. I I support. Thank you. I also do support. This then concludes um, item eight. Let's then move to item nine, which is allocation mechanism for OTMS in Saldana Bay, Western Cape Province. Um, over to you, Madam Twain, and the team. Yeah, Mr. Mopori will take us uh, through the submission. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Lan Mopori. Thank you, Chair, and good morning to everyone. Uh, the purpose of the submission is to request the PPS to note the allocation mechanism for third party access to the OTMS at Ram Storage Facility in Saldana Bay and approve the publication of the allocation mechanism on NERSA website. Uh, the license was issued uh, on 25 February 2016 on condition that the facility is completed and ready for operation. The commencement date uh, of the operation license was uh, 4 June 2021, after the completion of the facility and ready for operation. The allocation mechanism was assessed for compliance with the regulation 389 and based on NERSA assessment, the allocation mechanism meets the requirements of regulation 38 and 39. OTMS uh, also stated in its allocation mechanism that uh, the facility will be allocated to customers on a first come, first save basis by applying the first, the, the use it or lose it principle as prescribed by the regulations. Uh, it is recommended that the PPS notes the, that uh, OTMS has lodged its allocation mechanism with the energy regulator uh, for its petroleum storage facility located at Saldana Bay and also approve the publication of the allocation mechanism on the NIRSA website. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Mapoli. Um, members, any questions, uh, guidance, comments? I take it then that there are none because I don't see any hands. If that be the case, may I then proceed then to go to uh, paragraph 39 on page 9 of 59, which um, uh, recommends that uh, the Petroleum Pipeline Subcommittee notes the uh, that uh, all thinking mocks Sardana RFPTY LTD has lodged its um, allocation mechanism with the energy regulator for its petroleum storage facility uh, located at Saldana Bay in Western Cape province as required by regulation three, sub regulation six, and then uh, approves uh, the publication of the allocation mechanism on the NERSA's website. By sure offense members, if you support this recommendation, Thank you, Mr. Kumete. Thank Support you, Advocate check. Tole. Thank you, uh, Madam Masetti. I also support. This then uh, concludes uh, item nine, allowing us to move to item 10, which is a, a report on the monitoring of the actual tariffs charged by licenses uh, for the period 1 July 2020 to 30 June 2021. Over to Madam Twa and the team. Person, thank you. Um, this item was indicated as when we a project that we started uh, last year to monitor the tar actual tariffs chart. Uh, Mr. Gabo will assist in terms of introducing the uh, the submission. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, morning. I just I just hope that sorry, there, Mr. Gabo. I hope then just uh, that you you maintain the the confidentiality of, of these numbers. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think, Chair, for the sake of time as well, I won't go into the numbers as much. Um, maybe I'll just take the members into the background of why we 
embarked on the monitoring of actual tariffs charged by licensees. This was due um, to a number of licensees, particularly in the storage market, having expressed um, that the independent storage market is an increasingly, increasingly competitive environment and the tariffs that licensees are able to charge for storage services are, are, are dictated less by the regulatory framework, uh, less than by what the regulatory framework will allow and, the, and entirely is dependent on what the market is prepared to pay at any given point in time. Uh, according to some licensees, um, in order to compete in the storage market, licensees uh, had to offer the commercial uh, competitive commercial pricing arrangements that are similar to, to what customers would expect uh, from other suppliers in the market. With that said, uh, on the 20th of January 2022, the PPS approved um, and in the inaugural final findings uh, report on the monitoring of actual uh, tariffs uh, charged by licensees. And this was for the period of uh, 1st July 2019 to 30th of June 2020. Um, the report before this, the committee now is a second report uh, of monitoring these actual tariffs charged by licensees. Um, and this is for the period 1st of uh, Sorry, 1st of July 2020 to the 30th of June 2020, 2021. Okay. It is worth noting, members, that uh, there are a number of improvements that were made since the, the inaugural report. Um, such as that NASA has subsequently identified that about 15 licensees uh, uh, that are accommodating uh, third parties uh, out of uh, 123 facilities with, with, with quality data. Um, the database uh, uh, of approved tariffs for each facility and for each licensee in order to to distinguish which facilities have third parties and, and and we link them under specific licenses. So licenses, you would find that there are licenses that had multiple facilities. So we had done a number of improvements in allocating each license with various uh, facilities as well. And this had assisted in reducing the number of letters that were sent uh, out for requesting information. Um, a request uh, when we requested licenses we were more we were more specific, and we we also accompanied the letters of the request with a template for to for licenses to fill in with the appropriate information of the requested information, and we sent reminders, uh, constant reminders to licenses uh, nearer to the deadline uh, for submitting information to prompt uh, uh, compliance with the uh, uh, submitting information that is requested. This helped out a lot. Um, the team also with the help of uh, Dr. Kolo, we, we included an actual tariff charge column within the, 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 the monthly volume utilization spreadsheet that is sent out for licenses to, to submit volume information. And mm -hmm. So this also helped out in, in, in isolating all of the licenses which had third party access and what actual actual tariffs they were charging for that for <clears throat> to those third parties. Excuse me. The implementation of these solutions uh, by the team um, resulted in the ability to only focus on the licenses with third parties. Um, <clears throat> and for this report, the team identified uh, uh, only about 11 facilities belonging to nine licenses. Uh, we had noted that uh, we had identified 15 licenses uh, that are accommodating third party access. However, uh, the, 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 co the column showing the actual tariffs charge was incorporated, was only incorporated in the volume. Um, in the volume reporting template in April 2021, which excluded the periods, uh, some of the periods were for July 2020 to March 2021, I referred to in in the report. The the, the primary source of it, this was the primary source of information and and the letters uh, was was the letters before that period. 
that in, well, the primary source of information before the inclusion of that of that column in the volume reporting template was mainly the letters, and unfortunately, uh, there were other licenses that uh, could not be identified as accommodating third parties purely because of that discrepancy. Um, but we have since identified that uh, anomaly and will update accordingly in the, in the upcoming reports. In summary, um, all licenses were compliant uh, with Section 21 and 28 of the Pipelines Act, except for one particular licensee, namely um, VOPEC. And VOPEC has been uh, somewhat uncooperative, for lack of a better word, and has not submitted a, has not submitted or replied to a request to submit information by NASA, even after numerous um, attempts and requests through emails, as well as telephone calls and escalations. Um, <clears throat> We have noted that VOPEC has been responding to matters regarding licensing, uh, but not particularly matters regarding uh, actual tariff information. We therefore would like the, the, the members to note that NASA will, does intend to send a letter to VOPEC informing them of uh, NASA's intention to issue a notice of non-compliance should they not uh, comply with the request for, for them to submit actual tariff information to NASA. Um, lastly, members, I'd like to state that uh, it should be noted that this, this report is an, is an evolving report, and it is envisioned that in the future, on the next coming reports, that it will address or look into the relevance of the tariff set and approved by NASA uh, to the deemed import parity pricing mechanism of the DMRE, as well as uh, the issue of primary and storage uh, storage margins as well. Um, with that said, members, it is recommended that the PPS notes the report on the monitoring of actual tariffs charged by licenses for the period 1st July 2020 to the period 30 June 2021. Thank you, members. Echoes, Mr. Kawa. Um, any comments, questions, uh, guidance, uh, members? By short of hands. Okay, in the absence of uh, hands uh, in this regard, I would just like then to move to uh, paragraph 14.1, which is the recommendation where it is recommended that uh, the uh, Petroleum Pipelines uh, Subcommittee uh, notes the report on the monitoring of actual tariffs charged by licenses in the period 1 July 2020 to 30 June 2021. By show of hands, uh, uh, members, if you're happy to note. Thank you, Mr. Kumete. Thank you, Advocates Tolle. Um, I also uh, uh, note, um, Madam Masetti. Aish. Thank you. All right, so this um, item 10 is uh, duly uh, dealt with. Um, Supported, Chairperson. Uh, is this, this, the machine is slow again, Chairperson, even no, to no, no. press we understand, yes. We understand Thanks. your challenges, ma'am. Um, so the, the, the item is noted. Um, this then concludes uh, the, all the matters uh, that were to be discussed uh, in the meeting of today. I would like to thank you all, to thank all of you members for your invaluable uh, inputs, um, uh, the probing questions, as well as the guidance that you have provided to, to, to management, and to also thank management for their uh, responses and um, uh, progressive uh, approach in ensuring that uh, they, they are receptive to these uh, comments and, and um, uh, uh, guidance uh, to, to, to be on a continuous improvement path. Uh, I would also like to thank all the members of the public that have been following us uh, through our various uh, live stream uh, platforms. 
and wish all of you uh, a pleasant uh, day and a productive day further. Uh, Mr. Matecha, if you may just confirm.